What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 news update. There's quite a few new things to cover here in this video. Even though I only did an update a couple of days ago, there's a lot of stuff that's dropped already for the PS5. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it all here in this video. So starting with Spectre. Spectre has released a new PS5 SDK for building payloads on the PS5. Which is awesome because this is kind of like the stepping stones to the you know, kind of PS5 equivalent of the Open Orbis toolchain, which is the open source SDK for the PS4. And this is a pretty useful thing because, of course, we do have leaked SDK files for the official SDK uh, for the PS5 from Sony. Um, but obviously, that's copyrighted code. A lot of developers don't want to work with that. So having some kind of open source alternative is obviously a good thing. And hopefully we can get more homebrew and, you know, payload development going on the PS5. This is specifically for payloads at the moment. It doesn't really do homebrew at this stage. We can't really run homebrew right now on the PS5 without that hypervisor exploit. There may be some ways around that, but at the moment uh, there's no homebrew. But this is a good start to be able to actually start creating your own payloads on the PS5 using this uh, open source SDK. So that has been started there by Spectre. So Spectre has also been busy doing other things as well. We actually have an update to his exploit implementation. We're now on version 1.02. So this adds support for firmwares 3.0, 3.20, 3.21 and 4.02, as well as 4.51, uh, 3.10 and 4.0 are partially supported thanks to ChendoChat. So we already kind of had support for these firmwares, but I believe that was kind of like on an unofficial version. But Spectre's now actually released his implementation of it, actually updating the source files for proper support for these firmwares. And yes, 3.10 and 4.0, they say partially supported. I believe we need people to actually test on 3.10 and 4.0 because there's like an offset or something that's required. And you actually need somebody on those firmwares to be able to get that offset so that we can get official proper support for those firmwares. So if you are on 3.10 or 4.0, then you should definitely reach out to people like Spectre and uh, other people in the scene, other devs in the scene who can, you know, make that happen. But that's not all it does, of course. It now cleans up FDS after exploitation, so child processes don't inherit a bunch of resources unnecessarily. So some kind of cleanup stuff going on there, as well as fixing various bugs in the elf loader where incomplete reads could occur. So again, stability fixes there and added some entry point argument to elf loader for kernel read write. So we have some improvements there to the exploit and of course, most exploit hosts who are hosting the PS5 exploit will update to this new version as time goes on. So that's what we've got so far from Spectre, but Sistro has also been busy. So Sistro, of course, is the mastermind behind Gold Hen for the PS4, and he had a donation goal to get himself a PS5. It looks like he's got a PS5 now, and it's already paying dividends because we now have a FTP payload from Sistro that is persistent. So up till now, the FTP payload to the previous FTP payload would only run while you were on the WebKit. So when you load the exploit, you have to stay on that exploit web page on the PS5 in order to continue to use FTP. As soon as you close the web browser, you lose connection on FTP. And if you want to load it again, you'll have to rerun the exploit, re-inject the payload and reconnect uh, with FTP. But this is proper persistent FTP now through Spectre's exploit. So when you load the payload in the WebKit, you can then close the browser and continue using the PS5 and you'll still have connectivity on FTP. You can still access files on FTP, transfer files back and forth between your device and your PS5, even though you're no longer on the WebKit, even if you're in a game or in another app or on the home page or in the settings, you'll still have connection through FTP. So you don't have to keep opening up the web page and reloading the payload every time you want to connect through FTP, which is very, very handy. We're gonna take a look at that here in just a bit. And the final thing that I want to cover here as well, and this is something I'm going to give you guys a demo on as well, which is pretty interesting. So I first saw this here from Technikeza or Technikweza. And as you can see here, this is actually a method of being able to install PS5 packages on a jailbroken PS5. This is something we haven't really been able to do, surprisingly, even though we have access to the debug settings. The debug settings package installer does not allow us to install PS5 package files for whatever reason. 
Uh, people have tried a number, a number of different ways and it just will not install. You can install some PS4 packages, but not PS5 packages. So we haven't really had a way to install any PS5 packages on the system. Now, obviously, this we're still talking about retail packages here, not fake package files or anything like that. Just retail packages for game updates or, you know, freemium apps. So what's been discovered here is that you can actually use the external hard drive, uh, you know, the extended storage feature of the PS5 to install PS5 packages. So the way this works, as you can see here, the steps laid out here, you format an external hard drive on the PS5 as extended storage. You then find some files that somebody has posted. So in order to actually share these packages, you have to, you know, if you have something installed like Astro's Playroom, for example, which is a good game to test with because it does not require a license to run because it comes pre-installed on the PS5 anyway. So with something like Astro's Playroom, if you have the game installed, you would transfer it over to your external hard drive as extended storage. And then you would just connect through FTP and copy all the files from the external hard drive to your computer through FTP, put that in a zip archive and upload it. Then anybody else who has a jailbroken system can then download those files, format their external hard drive as extended storage and copy the files uh, that they downloaded to that extended storage over FTP. And then they can actually transfer it from the extended storage back to their uh, internal storage of their PS5 and they'll have a working copy of the game. That is how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a demo here. We'll also demo the permanent FTP at the same time to show you this method. So let's go ahead and dive into how to do this. So I've already downloaded the files here for Astro's Playroom because I don't actually have Astro's Playroom. I lost it off both of my PS5s when I had to reformat them a while ago. So um, yeah, I don't have the game anymore. So it'd be nice to get that game back. So I downloaded the files here. So we're going to go ahead and extract this to our desktop. So if we switch over to the PS5, you can see that I don't have Astro's Playroom installed. So what we're going to do is head to settings. We're going to go down to storage. I'm going to go to USB extended storage and format my USB drive as extended storage. Obviously, you want to back up any data on the drive before doing this. And you need to make sure that your external hard drive or USB drive that you're formatting as extended storage is plugged into one of the back USB ports. Otherwise, it will not work. It needs to be one of the higher speed USB ports that are at the back. And obviously your external drive or USB drive needs to meet the minimum requirements for extended storage in order for it to be formatted for the PS5, which I believe is like at least USB 3.0 plus, um, you know, I think a minimum of about 250 gigabytes of storage or something like that, which luckily my drive just meets. Uh, so yeah, we're pretty much good to go here. So we've gone ahead and done that. You can see I don't have any games or apps on the extended storage right now. So now we can just launch the exploit by going on to the web browser, loading up an exploit page. And we'll just load up the exploit right here. And of course, once we get to the point where we have stage six elf loader, we can then switch on over to our computer and inject the payload. So I'm gonna use Sistro's permanent FTP payload. So we'll go ahead and drag it in, put in the PS5's IP port number 9020, and we can inject payload. And when we do that, we get the little notification popping up there in the top left. So then I'm just going to open up a FTP client like FileZilla and we'll put in the IP address from the PS5. I'll just copy it here from the payload injector into the host box. And then the port number is still 1337 and we can quick connect and we have access to the PS5's hard drive right here. However, what we can also do now is exit out of our web page here, exit out of the exploit host. And even though I've exited, this should still work. So if we switch back here to the computer, we can go into the data folder and you can see it loaded the directory listing successfully. So FTP is still working even though we're not on the WebKit anymore. So yeah, it is persistent FTP, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at this external hard drive trick. Okay, so once you're connected on FTP, we're gonna go into the MNT folder and then the ext0 folder. So this is the folder that you basically want to replace. So everything inside ext0. So we should be able to just go into the HDD PS5 Astrobot folder. In here we have a ext folder. So this contains the Astro's Playroom. And we're just going to copy this entire folder into the MNT folder. And just say to overwrite. Always use this action to overwrite anything that might already be in there. 
and then you'll see it transferring it over right here. So this is the main package file app underscore 02.package. So we're just going to let that copy over. Astro's Playroom is about 10 gigabytes. So it won't take too long here to copy over over a wired connection. Okay, there we go. Everything has finished transferring. So we can switch back over once again. But let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So if we head back into SSD storage, we go to USB storage. You can see we now have 11.01 gigabytes showing. However, the game is not showing up here in the extended storage section. So let's uh, safely remove from PS5 and then I'll reconnect the drive and maybe that will refresh it. Okay, so I've reconnected it. Let's head back in here again. And yep, there we go. It now shows up Astro's Playroom. So all we need to do is transfer this back over. Now, even though it's showing up in here, it's not showing up on my actual games as if I can launch it. However, again, if I go back into storage and if we move it from the external drive to the internal drive, so we'll just move this over to the internal hard drive, then it should allow us to launch it and it should show up in our game library. Okay, there we go. So it's transferred over. If we head back to the game library, you can see it now shows up. And if we go to information, you can see it's on version 1.2. So there we go. And it's also runnable because it's a freemium app. It comes pre-installed on your PS5, so it does not require a license file. So I can just launch it here, no problem. So this is finally a way of us installing PS5 apps on the PS5, on jailbroken PS5s. It's not a great method because, again, other games that require licenses, you still have to have the license tied to your account in order for it to work. So for game updates, it's not, it's not perfect for game updates either. Um, what you can do, of course, to get a game update, for example, if I'm on Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart here and I'm only on version 1.00. However, if I wanted an update, if somebody else had an update for Ratchet & Clank out there, like the 1.2 update, for example, which I think is runnable on 4.03 um, or some other update, then they could go ahead and do the same thing where they format a USB drive as extended storage, copy their whole game with the update on there, and then transfer the files over with FTP. And then at that point, they could upload that. I could download it and then do the same method to swap the game back over to my PS5 with the extended storage method and have the game updated to 1.2, for example. So that is one way of doing it. But the problem with that is that you're relying on people who have the game installed with an older update on who are willing and able to do that, which not a lot of people are. It would be much better if we could just find a way of doing it through uh, you know, game updates through the Prospero Patches website where you have, you know, an index of all the game updates and you can just install them. There probably is a way, I'm looking into ways of doing that, of updating games uh, with older updates in an easier way. And, you know, I'll probably do a video if I find anything interesting in that. But that's what we've got so far. At least we have a method at the moment of installing PS5 updates and you know, freemium apps like Astro's Playroom and I don't know if there's other game demos out there that don't require licenses that could be installed this way, then you might be able to run some other trials and demos uh, with this method and install them on your PS5. So anyway, that's basically it for this update. So I hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.